Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And lately there's been a lot of talk from people about how to program uh, the standing barbell press because it's come up that it's a really, really stubborn exercise. It's an exercise most people struggle to progress on. Uh, Ken O'Body brought it up in his video the other day of one of his problems with it. But you guys have seen me last year build up to a 225 press. Then I did a 40 pound weight cut and I dropped down to 215 and then at 218, uh, I hit 225 again, right? Recently, very recently. And I'll probably build it back up higher than that. I'll probably build it back up higher than that and then do so even at a lighter body weight when I drop more body fat later. So the question becomes, how did I pull this off? And I did it without blasting gear. And that's what people need to remember too. This wasn't done using a bunch of drugs. Uh, in fact, this time doing it, I'm completely off TRT. I am drug free. I've been drug free for all of this year all of this year. And that means not even a replacement dose of testosterone, no TRT, nothing like that, no HCG. So I'm doing this just based off of, of training, training and food. So the first time I hit it, uh, I used concurrent periodization to go into my Bulgarian training. And that's what people forget. They saw me do it on Bulgarian and they're like, aha, that must be the key. No, I built the base to do it off of concurrent periodization. So what do I mean? Uh, I had two press days every week. I did overhead press twice a week. I had one day to where I built up to a three rep max. And then I had a separate day where I would do up to 10 sets of three, up to 10 sets of three. And I had gotten up to where I was doing on my 10 sets of three day, I was doing 175 pounds for 10 sets of three. That was most of my muscle building. And then I would build up to a three rep max or a two rep max on a separate day. So it was something like uh, Monday, I would do build up to a heavy peak set. And then Thursday, I would uh, do the volume triples. And I would go back and forth using concurrent periodization, never taking anything to failure. All right, those were not sets to failure, no drop sets. And I built up to, while doing that, to again, where I could do 175 for 10 triples. With fairly long breaks between, that was a lot of work. And then I got up to where I was doing 200 for three. I had already built up to 200 for three. And then I tested it and my max was 215 and I couldn't get 220 at first because I hadn't been doing singles. And as soon as I started doing singles, I started doing the Bulgarian training within, within two weeks uh, I got to 225. Now I want people to remember, I didn't build any muscle doing those singles on the Bulgarian, really no significant amount of muscle. I built all of the muscle and the base strength to do it using that concurrent periodization. That's how I got there. And then during the Bulgarian, I eventually got to 227 and a half. So what I also did in this last year, after all of that, I cut down, I cut 40 pounds. I went from 255 all the way down to 215. And people need to remember, I'm going to cut again later. I'm not finished. I'm just going to spend a while, uh, a good while, well, probably over half a year, sitting at this same body weight roughly, changing my set points in my body. And so now I've been regaining strength because my strength dropped down. When I was cutting, uh, I think the heaviest you guys have seen me press a while back was actually everything under 200 pounds. I was just doing volume with under 200 during the cutting. And then once I normalized at this weight, I started doing heavy work again. Well, when I went over to concurrent periodization, you guys saw me start with only a 205. I only had a 205 for my max going to the press again. And then you guys saw me struggle with 207 and a half. I barely locked it. But over the course of a number of weeks of doing concurrent periodization, yet again, what's happened? I've hit a 225. So what's my programming look like now? Well, instead of volume triples, it's now dynamic work. And I don't have a lot of weight on the bar. I'm, I'm really, I think I've only got 175. Yeah, we're doing 175 for about 10 to 12 doubles, up to 12 doubles. But that's also after doing floor press. So I come in and I don't even do a max very often. Only once a month do I come in and hit a max. Now I tend to do a lot of heavy work, what doubles and triples after benching on my max effort bench press day. And then my dynamic effort bench press day, what do I do? I come in and I do up to 12 doubles 
as explosively as possible. So the net result of that is that I have one day that's really just based upon skill work and a little bit of muscle building and lifting heavy weights, including even up to heavy doubles with the press after benching. So I'm always doing it in a fatigue state. And then I have a day where I come in and do very, very high volumes of explosive work with moderate weight. Because 175, even for me, that's, that's not heavy for a double, right? I could probably do six reps with that, maybe more. Maybe up to eight if I were to stretch it all the way out. But instead, I come in and do up to 12 doubles as explosively as possible. So what happens? I get tons and tons of skill work. I've also been doing very large amounts of tricep hypertrophy work lately. So very large amounts of tricep work, because for me, that's the weak link in my press. And I honestly believe that for me, the tricep work will pay off and I'll get higher than the 225. I think as my triceps grow for all the bench accessory work I'm doing there, that that will bring my press up. I think I, if I just get stronger triceps, it'll improve. Because what do we know about the standing barbell press? The standing barbell press relies heavily on the triceps. It works the triceps more than any other form of overhead press, especially any form of seated. It's vastly superior in terms of tricep recruitment, and then it hits the long head really hard. Well, if it hits some, that means there are also possibly limiting factors in it. So that's been the other secret of me doing it at a lighter body weight this time, has been that I've incorporating more tricep work. But originally I built it using a heavy light concurrent periodization and now I'm doing heavy and then dynamic work but the pattern is the same isn't it I have one really heavy pressing day every week and I have one lighter large set large number of set training for it so that I get tons and tons of first reps because what people need to remember, the press also has its own technique to it, and there's a bar path to it. And you have to learn to perform this exercise. Pressing heavy, especially the first rep, in which you can't use a stretch reflex, has a large skill component to it. And it also has a large hypertrophy component. So doing enough volume to grow from and then addressing those weak points, and in this case, triceps are my weakest link in it. I have a lot of upper chest. I got plenty of shoulder. I got plenty of trap. Coming in and doing that is allowing me uh, to do this. So that's really the key. More than anything, I, and I feel like in my experience, concurrent periodization works really, really well for the press. Uh, doing large volumes of training to where you get lots of first reps, so you get to practice the first rep a lot, but not taking sets to failure. This is one of those exercises that as soon as you hit muscle failure, it takes everything out of you. It's kind of like the deadlift. Once you've done a set to failure, you're pretty well shot. And it has a large motor unit learning component to it. So I would say that that is really what it comes down to. It's about training volume. It's about practice on heavy reps. And it's about addressing your weak points on this lift from a hypertrophy perspective. Now, for someone else, their side delts could be the limiting factor, right? There could be another muscle that's involved, but in my case, it's definitely triceps. And I would say for most of you, getting your triceps is as strong as possible. And maybe doing some extra long head work, particularly if that's lagging for you. But just tricep work in general, anything that builds your triceps up. Uh, I think is one of the best ways to bring this lift up, even if the lift itself, you don't change the reps and sets on uh, the press itself and you were to leave it stagnant, I think for a lot of you that if you were to spend extra time building your triceps up and then test a max on it, I think you would find that it would go up because it's very, a very much a tricep dominant exercise. Very much is. And I, I know Paul, Charles Polkwin and used to talk about that a lot back in the day. So if people really want to know my secret, having done it twice, once at a heavier body weight, now at a lighter, and, and I'll use this similar method probably coming down even further, I'll probably uh, my goal is to get at least to the 225 or higher while weighing under 200 pounds later. Now that's going to be a tough feat, but that's what I'm aiming for. It's going to require maximizing body composition, but I'm going to use a similar approach because that's been my success on this lift. And people have noted that, that I'm actually pretty good at this lift relative to a lot of other guys, particularly even uh, similar body weights or sizes or whatever else. Um, and that, that really is my secret. That's the programming secret. It's, it's avoiding failure. It's avoiding failure. It's about doing tons of practice work with it. You get a lot of volume with first reps.
And in my case, that involves using a concurrent style of training both times that I've done it. So I would say that that's my personal secret and that's how I've gone about doing it. And, and I think it's a good approach to this exercise personally. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.